as Jasper said, it's a um, tiny shield. It's a side project. Um, I did partly at the food and partly uh, when I was bored at home. Um, I started this like, I think two years ago or something, um, which we'll come back to. Um, the goal was to serve uh, shields or like uh, the shields are like these badges with information uh, that's coming from services, um, for example, from NPM. So I can show you, I, I don't know if this is readable by the way, but um, this shows the version number, for example, from bundle phobia, uh, if you're familiar, it's um, a service to see how big your package is uh, and like a dependency count. Um, if you've never seen these before, you often see these uh, shields at like uh, Project Readme, often open source projects uh, specifically. Um, sometimes also at like docs websites, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. I kind of want to give a tour through the whole project and hopefully show you uh, a couple of use cases, uh, how I use the edge, um, what I bumped into, and hopefully you can take some uh, something useful from that. Um, so first I wanted to give you an overview of the project. Um, I basically put it in as a NPM workspace. So it has a front end, which is a, a website I built with uh, Astro. Um, uh, it has a worker, which is a Cloudflare worker, uh, which is kind of the whole backend, so to say. Um, and then the code that actually creates the badges, um, it's an SVG generator. Um, with quite some complex uh, uh, computations uh, in there. Uh, I found out through Shields, uh, which we'll also come back to. Uh, and fourth, the services is kind of an internal separation because it's used by both the website, the front end, and by the, the, by the worker. Um, so I wanted to show the end result first. Uh, uh, as you can see, it has dark mode. <laughs> um, so this is uh, built by Astro. Um, it's kind of it's uh, inspired by Shields.io. Uh, if you've ever seen that, uh, at the moment it's really minimal. I have to s admit uh, I was planning on adding more services, but at the same time I first want to tackle some UX problems because uh, it's not really obvious what you need to fill in, especially stuff like Netlify. Like, oh wait, if I scroll here, it doesn't actually scroll on screen. Um, like where the heck do you get the project ID? I don't know. Um, but some other stuff is more obvious, I would say like NPM. If I put in um, NPM and let's say uh, put the clear package, uh, you get the version uh, number back. And this is the generated SVG. If I click like copy here, it, um, it copies the markdown link so you can just put it in, in your readme. Um, it also has two other pages, a custom batch, batch uh, page, because you can just use your own endpoints if you want to, um, and an about page with some of the goals, some of the stuff I already talked about. Um, yeah, as I said, the batch maker, uh, one of the goals was just to create a small code base, because uh, I looked at Shield.io and it's massive. Um, so the batch maker, it's only 150 lines of code, uh, but it still follows the, the kind of the specification um, of batch, or I mean of Shields.io. Um, check. There we go. So uh, this is really magnified, so it looks pretty crappy. But um, this is uh, the Shields.io spec. It's kind of like a spec on how, uh, like the proportions of the, the batch, what kind of colors, the font, uh, that kind of stuff, padding. Um, uh, I often put them in my open source projects. But I found that they load pretty slow. Sometimes they went offline even, and they just showed nothing or like this broken image uh, thing, you know, when an image doesn't load on your browser. Um, and that's why I decided to look into if I could improve this somehow. Uh, my first try was to just uh, use the Shields.io code um, and put it on uh, a Cloudflare worker, uh, which didn't work uh, since the since the builder relies on a lot of native Node.js modules, and it also had some pretty heavy dependencies. Uh, and it kind of assumed it was like running on this uh, big Node.js server, which it did for Shields.io in a Docker container. Um, 
So I could have, of course, try to like, uh, that was also my first guess was trying to transpile and polyfill kind of those things away so it could still work in a cloud work environment. Um, but yeah, in the end that kind of created a huge code base which had some performance problems um, and I felt like starting fresh would be better here. So I created the, the uh, batch maker first. Um, with just JavaScript, so no reliance on Node.js modules, and I try to keep it as minimal as possible. Um, that also means I cut away some features that Shields.io has, so such custom icons and that kind of stuff, um, which sound easy, but actually, um, the like dynamic width of the badges, it's like calculated based on on how uh, on the dimensions of the font. So if you add custom icons to that, it's uh, it's getting really messy and complex. Um, yeah. Um, so actually surfing the batches, which is uh, the core of this thing, uh, is done by a worker. Um, so I thought it would be nice to look how a request goes through there. Um, maybe if you remember from the first talk, um, it was, I, I don't actually know how Cloudflare calls it, but um, it's like a different format. So you export like a, fit, a fetch uh, function, um, but instead you can also use a service worker format. Um, uh, because when I started this, the uh, Cloudflare pages didn't exist yet, um, so I kind of had had to do this. Um, but if you've ever uh, written a service worker or looked at service worker code, uh, this could uh, look familiar to you. You kind of add an event listener, and you get an event, and you need to respond with, and then kind of handle that uh, event request. Um, and the first thing that was uh, really obvious to like increase performance is of course caching. So Cloudflare makes this really easy, as you already uh, uh, the first talk mentioned the KV, so the key value store of Cloudflare. Um, in this case, uh, or actually no, my bad. This is just the caching layer uh, on uh, Cloudflare network. So. Um, I'm trying to match it against the URL, but you can match it against any string, basically. Um, so it just saves the URL and then the data that's, uh, or the request, uh, I mean, that's getting returned. And yeah, if it's fine, it's, it's, uh, it's returned. And then next up, we have the route matching. Um, so this is all kind of more manual than uh, Cloudflare pages because, well, we just this is also routing logic. Um, that also means that I'm, because I'm surfing the the website from the same code base, uh, I need to handle that too. So in this case, assets and anything that doesn't end with .svg, of course, uh, you could also do something like, um, yeah, let's say if anything that doesn't start with slash API in the path name, whatever custom logic you want, you're kind of creating your own CDN in a way, um, or at least your own CDN logic, which runs on the cloud for CDN. Um, and if it finds an asset, for example, th uh, that uh, is retrieved from the key value store. So this key value store just has a key, it has, for example, index.html or, I don't know, um, react.es, um, and then as the value, it has literally the blob of HTML or the blob of JavaScript you return. Um, then if it doesn't find that, I'm kind of assuming uh, you're making an API request. And in this case, I'm matching it against like uh, server's names. Uh, don't worry too much about this, some error handling. Um, and in the end, um, I kind of figure out like which service I have to call and uh, what kind of values I get from the URL. And in this case, um, this, uh, services um, object, it just has all the supported services and it, maybe it sounds a bit complicated but the service is just a function um, that accepts uh, like certain uh, values you put in. For example, if I say like uh, slash um, tinyshields.dev slash npm slash clur.svg, um, it expects this clur param, like the name and then it uses it to fetch something, and in this case, like the npm example, it fetches um, from the npm registry uh, what the version is. So um, for other services, it's other values and other returns, but in the end, we get the same 
kind of formal back from each function, which is a, a label, a message, a color. Um, those three are used for the batch. Um, and then the max age, which is used for uh, caching. Uh, I don't know if caching is already in there, yeah. So um, this is also the service worker format. So um, you can wait until something is done. And in this case, I'm uh, storing something in the Cloudflare uh, cache. Um, and as you can see, this is basically the what I was talking about earlier. So you have this key value. So the key is just the URL and um, the response, or I mean the data that's stored is just a clone of the response. Um, did I miss something? I don't think so. Um, so does it perform? Well, <laughs> this is kind of, it, felt, it feels kind of like cheating because uh, as you saw the, the caching is really easy to do. And since it's the first thing I do in the, in the handler, it's really quick. Um, so uh, like most responses are done under half a second and like 95% of the responses are even done in uh, 0.004 seconds. Um, of course, that is if it's cached, um, which is not always. Uh, I will get back to that. Um, this is basically, this is done uh, with 200 requests. You can see a little bit of uh, variety here, but all of them are, are pretty quick. Like the slowest are like a tenth of a second, so um, I would say that's still quick. Um, oh yeah, are there any questions uh, so far about this part before I dive into the front end and uh, demo? The Cloudflare uh, cache that is specifically on that uh, instance of the node of the edge you are on or not. So the question is: Is Cloudflare cache still on? Is like related to the worker? You mean or? Um, no, I think. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure on this. Um, I did some tests on like from uh, other regions, and I believe at least in a certain region it's shared. Like the. <laughs> the uh, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I, I believe so. Certain regions, but if if it's like from another region, it sometimes uses another cache. But um, don't quote me on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if Cloudflare had built something that sort of propagates caches, okay. that would mean that if I cache something here in Amsterdam, it would then be distributed all around the world. So I think it's it's distributed around Europe at least. I'm not 100 percent sure about about ev everywhere, but yeah, it does propagate uh, to, uh, to, to, to a certain extent. Like Frankfurt and Ireland or so? Yeah, for example, yeah. Since there's a lot of edge, uh, edge locations. Yeah. yeah. Why did you clone your response on the previous page? Because you cannot like, uh, once you kind of consume a response, so to say, so if you put it somewhere, then it doesn't want to be consumed again. Uh, I think you need to do the same for service workers, yes. Uh, so that's where it comes from. Uh, if you didn't clone it, then it will just complain that, sh that you uh, already already did something with the response. Is the, the, your cloud, your worker code 100% portable to the service worker? Is it, is it like... Well, no, since I'm using Cloudflare APIs, um, but it's, it's, it's quite portable. I think the cache storage has the same API as well. Yeah, it does have the same API. But in the browser, it's cache is with mesh instead of Cloudflare cache. Yeah. I think with some rollup, um, you can like, you can get that. Yeah, or you can abstract it away, of course. Which is a nice bridge to Deno, or uh, I, don't, I forgot how you pronounce it. Do you know? Um, uh, yeah, so I thought like how hard could it be to uh, also deploy this on uh, Dino since it's also uh, using edge workers. Um, and the, it was kind of a mixed bag. Um, what's nice about Dino is that it kind of, how do you say, like it feels more simple with Cloud for you. Well, on, on the end, it's like more. Uh, like you have less help 
with Cloudflare, you have a lot of services and stuff you can use. While this is still pretty bare bones, of course, it's also a lot newer. Um, they have their own network, uh, which also means there's less locations than Cloudflare at the moment, which, of course, Cloudflare has been deploying new locations uh, for years, and they've just started. So I kind of expect them to catch up, but uh, who knows? Um, this is so kind of the only thing I needed to replace where uh, was the caching logic. Um, at the moment, Deno doesn't have caching, so it's gonna, yeah, that kind of sucks here, um, since uh, a lot of performance comes from the caching. Uh, and uh, also, Deno is kind of the whole idea behind it is that you don't have this, like with Node, it's it's normal that you have like a package JSON with dependencies, and you have a lot of, uh, you have like a build step to transpile your code. And then how it's more, uh, the idea behind is that you just deploy your source code, so to say, um, and they handle the rest. So they also support like TypeScript directly, and you can even deploy GSX or TSX to it. Um, and in this case, that kind of clashed with what I was doing because um, my code is using uh, NPM uh, modules. But uh, with Rollup, I was able to, it was not that hard to like transpile to something then I could run. Um, then the other thing, yeah, besides removing uh, caching and call to KV is with Deno. Um, by the way, this import doesn't work in Rollup. Uh, this is a kind of uh, still work in progress. Um, but uh, so the front end uh, didn't get working yet, but the API did, which was important to just uh, look at the performance. But either way, it's just a uh, native HTTP server, which uh, Deno like provides. Uh, which is also a plus with Deno, because basically if you write a local Deno server, uh, which runs on your machine, you can just put it on Deno Deploy and it works. There's no special uh, syntax or like a service worker format or whatever. Um, that being said, the service worker format does work. It's not documented anywhere, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it did work. Uh, oh yeah, this is another another part of the code that I removed. So I'm just returning a response. So I thought it would be interesting to compare these. Of course, this is also really like, how fast does the service response, uh, you know? Um, but in the end, both are really fast. I, To be honest, I don't think there's any significant um, uh, difference between these two. Then I really says it's like uh, cutting edge performance, but I guess Cloudflare kind of the same. Um, in Deno, we do have some more responses that are a little bit faster. We're, call it, we're talking about milliseconds here. Um, but on the other hand, it also has some slower responses uh, compared to Cloudflare, so there's a bit more of a, a gap uh, there. But I, yeah, as I said, I don't think it's, it's really... Uh, so both are fast, um, but yeah, Deno is lacking some features. I think the cache would be the, the one that's... Uh, really blocking this from uh, being deployed to production, so to say. Um, that was the backend. Um, I thought it would also be interesting to talk a little bit. So um, I, for the website, I'm using Astro to build it. In the end, it's just static files that are getting output. Astro also has like a serverless uh, output. Um, and even uh, for edge workers, you can have a deploy target. Um, but uh, when I was building this, that also <laughs> didn't exist yet. Um, but uh, so the nice thing about static uh, assets, of course, is uh, what I showed you earlier, is that you can just put them in the KV, uh, which is done, uh, well, I didn't say that, but I deployed it with Wrangler, and it puts it in the KV, uh, and it just works. So you don't need any special, um, uh, any special modules or config, it's uh, just static files. Um, I chose for Astro because I wanted, so the, the website as you said was, it's pretty bare bones and um, it's pretty small. So uh, first I thought maybe I could use Next or Next, but it kind of sucks because you have like a client uh, downloads like uh, 160 KB around like boilerplate just for downloading React and like uh, the Next handlers and that kind of stuff, um, which uh, yeah, is not the best I would say. Um, so Astro is nice because it's um, framework agnostic. And in this case, I chose for Preact, uh, which is nice and small. 
this is like the config, uh, really minimal. And then on the other side, you have like the, the home page you saw earlier. Um, yeah, it's just importing some components. Uh, this is Astro syntax, by the way. So it's kind of like this front matter. Um, and then the special attribute here, uh, client, uh, and then load, it tells uh, Astro that that part needs to be hydrated. So the about page and the custom page, they don't use any JavaScript at all. So if you load those, uh, no JavaScript. Which results, uh, at least for the home page, uh, in only 16 uh, KB of uh, JavaScript, uh, 8 kilobytes for Preact, then 7 kilobytes for my own uh, logic for the batch builder, and then only 1 uh, kilobyte for the Astro client, uh, which is basically just the logic for where it needs to hydrate. I assume it will grow a little bit if you have a lot of components that hydrate, but I, I, I would say not that much, at least not to 150 kilobytes uh, like other frameworks have. Um, and now you might think like, well, 150 KB, it's not that much, right? I mean, an image is 500 or something, but uh, JavaScript is really expensive, especially on uh, mid-range devices or phones or whatever. Um, or let's say you're using your phone on a battery saving mode. Um, you also need to parse that JavaScript. So. Uh, I thought it was pretty important for uh, fast servers to also have a fast uh, front end. Uh, I also got a nice rounding error, uh, uh, rounding error on the website carbon calculator uh, <laughs> because it's basically saying zero here, but I would think it's uh, s somewhere more to 0 0.01, uh, I think. Um, it's also, uh, oh, when I was making these slides, I thought, oh, it could actually be a good surface to add to uh, Tiny Shields. If you have any other services you would like to see, uh, hit me up. Um, would love to add more because, uh, yeah, as I said, at the moment it's only a couple. Um, so drop by after the talk or uh, uh, open an issue or pull request on GitHub, I would say. Um, that's it. I think, does anyone have a question? <laughs>